What's up, my friends? Today we're going to be talking about limits. Yes, this is the very first video over what limits are. And in this video, we're going to discuss basically the concept of what a limit is. So let's just dive right into it. Change, 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 change. Change is such a vital concept in all aspects of the world that we live in. So many things around us change nonstop. Any, many, and, and, and again, and many of these items that change can be modeled with mathematical functions. And I know that you're going to get really boring by hearing that, but that's really true. A lot of the things that change in this world can be modeled with mathematics. And that's why we love math, right? Or at least I hope you do. So of course we want to truly understand how functions change. Because if many things in this world could be modeled with functions, then we really want to understand how functions change. So as x values increase or decrease, what's the function or y doing, right? That's a constant question that we have. As x goes up, as x goes down, as x becomes this, as x becomes that, what is the function, which is y? What is y doing? So limits are a new way for us to explore how functions change. They just allow us to explore functions in really a whole new way that we haven't talked about before. Or we actually kind of have talked about, but not using the word limits. So let's consider this function, right? So now this is a rational function, x squared minus 4 over x minus 2. Um, we've spent a lot of time talking about rational functions. And I hope something you recognize right away from this function is that x cannot equal 2 because a denominator just cannot be 2. Now, if you, if you really remember rational functions, you might say, hey, let me, let me factor that numerator. And then I'll realize, oh, well, the x minus 2 actually cancels away. And if you remember, when, when a factor cancels like that, it actually becomes a whole. So at x equals 2, it's obviously not in the domain. There's nothing there, but that tells me there's a whole at x equals 2. Um, so anyway, that, hopefully you remember a little bit, right? But that's the idea of this function, right? So now let, let's talk about the graph of this function. So imagine that you and a friend are walking along the graph of this function. And here you guys are. So one of you is walking up the function, and one of you is walking down the function. Now, because x equals 2 is not in the domain of the function, there is a hole. There it is. You can actually see that hole at x equals 2. There it is right there. And, you know, you would think about it, like if you and your friend were walking towards this hole, you, you, you'd think there'd be some warning signs, right? Like maybe there'd be a sign that says, caution, there's a hole ahead. Or caution, f of 2 is undefined. Now remember, f of 2 is the y value. And um, there is no y value because at 2, there's nothing. There's no y value there. It's a hole, right? You can't have something where there's a hole. So, you know, th th something's going on here. Warning lights, flashing lights. Something should be telling these kids, hey, stop walking. You're going to fall through this hole. And, you know, if you and your friend actually reach x equals 2, well, you're going to fall into the hole into oblivion. You're just going to fall straight down forever. So obviously a problem exists at x equals 2. But let's analyze this a different way. Let's talk about what happens to f of x, the function, y, as you and your friend walk very, very close to 2. So obviously if we get to 2, we're going to fall through the hole. But what happens as we walk and get closer and closer and closer to 2? And I'll either this way as well, walking down, what happens is we get closer and closer and closer to 2. So we know that we can't get to 2 because at 2 there's a hole. So now the question comes into what's happening as we get closer and closer. And to analyze this, we can use a table, right? So um, the table has x values across the top and y values or f of x, right, the function across the bottom. And what I did is just use a calculator, right? So, okay, let's get really, really close to 2 from the left-hand side. This is my friend who's walking up the line. So he's getting really, really close. So he says at 1.99, and at 1.99, if you plug that into the function, you get 3.99. And then he's going to get a, a little bit closer, 1.999. And if you plug that into the function, you get a y value of 3.999. And, and if it's like, all right, I'm going to get really, really super, super close, 1.9999, really, really close to 2. So again, I'm not there yet, so I'm not falling through that hole, but I'm just getting super close. The function, again, if you plug that in, is 3.99999, right? So you get the idea. Now, my other friend who's walking down towards 2, he's going to be on the right-hand side of 2. So he's getting really, really close. Maybe he's at 2.01. And if I plug 2.01 into the function, I get 4.01. And then it gets a little bit closer, just a smidgen closer, 2.001. And then he becomes 4.001. 
and then he gets super duper close, 2.0001, and if he plugs that into the function, his y value is 4.001. And you can actually see this in the graph. So as I get closer and closer and closer and closer to an x value of 2, you can actually see that the y value is 4. But again, there's nothing at 4. 4 is where the hole is, but I'm getting really, really close to 4. So just as x is getting really, really close to 2, the y is getting really, really close to 4. Now notice in the center here is at 2. Well, at x equals 2, obviously I'm undefined. That turns the denominator to 0, and you just can't have that. But again, what we're focusing on here is what's happening as we get really, really close to 2, not actually getting to 2. And as we get closer and closer to 2, the function is getting closer and closer to 4. So what we notice is that x gets closer to 2 from each side. The values of f of x, now please, 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 please remember f of x is just a fancy way of saying y. The values of y are getting closer to 4. And again, if you go look, look at that graph, you see that, right? Every time I inch closer and closer and closer to an x value of 2, the corresponding y value is getting closer and closer and closer to 4. And this is what a limit is. So here's what we say. We say the limit of f of x, x squared minus 4 over x minus 2, as x approaches 2 equals the number 4. So we, we can't say that at 2, we are at 4, because that's just not true. At 2, there's a hole. There's nothing at 2. So a limit is talking about getting closer and closer to a value, right? So it's a limit. We're, we're, we're limited to 2. We, we know we can't be 2, but we can get really, really close to 2. And to express this mathematical sentence, that as we approach 2, the function equals 4, and we use a limit. And this is what's called limit notation. So we use an LIM to represent the limit. LIM is an abbreviation for limit. And below the LIM, we, we, we announce what X is doing. And like I mentioned here, we're getting X is getting closer to. So notice there's no equal sign there because X can't equal to. It's just getting closer to two. So, you know, maybe it's um, zero and then it's one and then it's 1.5 then it's 1.6 then it's 1.9 then it's 1.9999. Or again, it could be coming the other way as well. Five, 4, 3, 2.5, 2.1, 2.01, 2.001. The point is, is, as X is getting closer and closer to 2. So what we're saying is, hey, listen, at 2, I know this function's undefined. I know that there's nothing there. It's a hole. But as I get closer and closer to 2, the function, this is the function right here, the function is approaching 4. So again, x value 2, y value 4. But there is no point, right? There is no actual point to 2 comma 4, but it's this idea as I get closer to 2, the y values of the function are getting closer to 4. And this is what a limit is, okay? So here is the actual definition of a limit. It says, suppose that f of x is a function defined on some open interval containing the number a. The function f of x may or may not be defined at a. That doesn't really matter. The idea is what's happening as we approach a. So again, this is our limit notation. So LIM for limit. Underneath, we're announcing, hey, x is getting closer to a particular a value. And then we have the function. And then again, L is the number that the y values are going to. So we talk about what's happening to x. And the answer to a limit is the y value that we are approaching. So this is how it's written, and this is called uh, limit notation. But again, it's pronounced the limit of f of x as x approaches a equals the number l. Hence, l is the limit. So this means as x gets closer and closer to a, but remains unequal to a. Remember, we're never going to actually get to a or equal a. We're just talking about what happens when we get closer to a. The corresponding values of f of x get closer to l. So, you know, the reason why this is needed is because of the exact problem we just looked at. At 2, there's nothing there. So, mathematically, we cannot plug in 2. We get something that doesn't even exist. We get a 0 in the denominator, and that just doesn't exist. So, mathematicians were like, well, we need to talk about what's happening at 2. I know that I can't talk about what's happening at 2, so why not talk about what's happening as we get close to 2? And that's where this idea of a limit came up. <coughs> Now, this definition can be explained with a picture as well. So here's a picture of that definition. Um, both graphs are actually the same, but the left one, or the one on the right, just a little bit more detail to it. But the idea here is that we have our x value a. And again, I don't care what happens at a. There could be a point there. There could not be a point. But it doesn't even matter to me because a limit is asking you what happens if you get closer to a. 
So we're saying, okay, you know, what's happening to the function or the y value? So as the x values get closer and closer and closer and closer and closer and closer to a, from both sides, mind you, what is the y value going towards? And that is L. And then again, this picture on the right here just kind of shows that, right? It says, says x gets closer to a from the right as x gets close, excuse me, not being from the left, as x gets closer to a from the right, you know, where's the function going, right? The function values are approaching L. So, you know, we might start off, you know, pretty far to the left. We might start off a little bit far to the left from A, and then we plug in X and we get F of X, right? That's what functions do. You plug in X, you get Y. And then again, maybe we start a little bit to the right of A, and then again, we plug in X, we get F of X. But as we start to squeeze and we get closer and closer and closer and closer, we really start to squeeze in on A, never really getting to A, but just squeezing in on A, our Y values start to squeeze in on L, the Y value for that limit. And that is, of course, where we get this notation from. So um, don't make this really more confusing than it needs to be. Um, it's just the idea of is, you know, Years ago, you talked about plugging something into a function, right? Hey, what happens at 3? Well, you plug 3 into the function. What happens at negative 10? Well, you plug negative 10 into the function. We're not doing that anymore. What we're doing is we're saying, hey, I don't want you to plug in 3. I want to talk about what happens as we get really super close to 3. And what happens as we get really super close to negative 10? And you may think that, that that is a pointless thing. Like, why do we even know, need to know that? Well, you got to give me a couple more um, lessons here, and you got to give me a little bit more time, and I will get there. Trust me, this matters a lot. This is super, super important, especially as we move into calculus. So now the question is, is how do we find limits, right? How, how do we understand the answer to a limit? Because I hope you know what I'm asking you now, but let's actually put it to use and do it in some problems. And what we're going to talk about in this video right now, and we're going to learn several different ways to evaluate limits. But in this video, I want to talk about how to use tables to do it and how to use your calculator to help you with that. And this is exactly what I'm talking about with the table, is um, if I want to find out what happens as x gets closer to 2, well, I start plugging in numbers closer to 2. I mean, it's that simple, and I see what happens. All right, so here is our first example. We're going to use a calculator and a table to kind of show this. So um, I want to figure out what's happening to the function 3x squared. Pretty nice par parabola, um, quadratic. But what's happening uh, to the function 3x squared as we get closer to 4? So if I'm thinking about a table, I'm thinking, okay, let me let me maybe do 3.9, maybe do 3.99. I want to get really, really close to 4. Um, and then I want to also get close to 4 on the other side. So maybe 4.02 um, and then maybe 4.001. You don't have to like, you know, mo most kids will do 3.9, 3.99. You, you can really choose an arbitrary number. It doesn't have to be 3.99. It could be 3.9762 or 4.0145. I mean, most kids will just jump to 3.99 and 4.001 because it's easy, and it is, but it, you really can pick any number as long as it's really, really close. So I'm going to go grab my calculator. Now, a couple of nice ways to do this, um, just to kind of make it simple and fast, um, especially because we're going to plug in a couple different values, is if you go to y equals, and in y equals, type in the function 3x squared. And then what you could do is this. Once you go to the home screen, you can hit VARS, which stands for variables. It's right down here underneath the down arrow. Slide over to Y VARS, go to function, and grab Y1. And then we could actually ask the calculator to plug in 3.9. So we're actually telling the calculator, plug in 3.9 into Y1. And you've got to use those parentheses, and they'll give you the answer, 45.63. And then I can say, okay, well, let's do it again. So VARS, Y VARS. Y1, let's, let's, let's get even closer, 3.9999, all right? You can do as close as you want. And you say, oh, okay, 47.99. <coughs> and you say, okay, well, let, let's try the other side. So once again, VARS, Y VARS, and again, this is just pretty quick, easy way to do it, only a couple clicks in your calculator. And again, let's go 4.0001, really, really close to 4 from the right side. And oh, okay, we're at 48. So notice that, you know, 3.9999, we were like 47.99, 4.001, we're like 48.00. It does seem that the outputs, the, the Y coordinate, the Y value is really close to 48. And again, when I say get arbitrarily close, it, it, what I mean by that is like, it, you could get it, it, 
you don't have to choose 3.99, right? So let me show you this, right? So let's go and grab Y1 one more time. You're going to get used to doing this. Let's, let's get like 3.999856. Again, some number just that's randomly close to 4. And you say, wow, that's pretty close to 48. And same thing if I go to the other side and say, okay, um, let's see what happens at 4.00005411. Again, just nobody really ends up doing this. I'm just trying to show you guys that you can really pick any number you want. You say, wow, that's really close to 48. So we kind of make the conclusion that it looks like that um, the limit is 48. So from one side to their side, I was getting really, really close to 48. Um, now notice I didn't figure out what happens at four. And that's always worth trying. Like you could always plug in four and see what happens. And oftentimes that actually might be your answer. So I, sometimes we tell kids, hey, when you're all kind of said and done, you know, try plugging in four. Now, I, I hesitate to do this because this is not what a limit is asking me to do. A limit is not asking me to plug in four, but I will say that sometimes if you plug it in and you get an answer, that's your answer, 48. So it does make sense that as we approach four, the limit is getting closer and closer to 48. Pretty easy problem there, now that you kind of understand it. All right, let's do another one here, um, sine of x divided by x, and we're asking you, hey, what's happening as we get closer and closer to zero? Now, I don't need to plug in zero to know what's gonna happen. I recognize the denominator of x, and if I plug in zero to that denominator, I know right away what's gonna happen. I'm gonna get something that's undefined. So again, we said, well, let's get, let's get really, really close to zero, right? So my x values would be like point oh, 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 one, four, get really, really close to zero. That would be from the right-hand side. From the left-hand side, it'd be like negative point oh, 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 one, six. Again, I'm just picking numbers that are really, really close to both sides. So once again, we're going to go to y equals real quick. We're going to erase what's there, type in sine of x, close that parenthesis, divide by x, and then we can exit and go back to the home screen here. And again, now that we change what y1 is, when we go vars, y vars, y1, it's now going to plug it into that new function. So again, let's plug in 0 0.00014, and we get, whoa, wow, that's pretty close to 1. But again, we got to check both sides. You always got to check both sides. You can't just check one side. You got to check both sides. So let's go back to the function here, y1, grab it again, and we'll go... Uh, negative point zero 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 one six this would be coming from the left hand side and oh i just got one at that point so it's pretty safe to say that the both sides are coming together at one and um again you never you might not get there like again the example we started off with we we were 3.99999 and 4.00001 and that's why we said well hey, that's pretty close to four so that's what the limit is it's getting closer and closer to four all right let's try this one here um, we got a rational function. We want to figure out what happens as we get closer and closer to three. So once again, you know, kind of just to get that table kind of started here from the left-hand side, that would be like 2.9964. Again, just really, really close to three. I'm just picking random values because I want to show you that it doesn't have to be the standard 2.99. It can really be anything that's super close. And then from the right-hand side, we're talking 3.00015, whatever. All right, so once again, I'm going to grab my calculator here. And first thing I got to do is don't forget to go into y1 and change it to this new function. So I need parentheses across the top. x squared plus x minus 12. And I'm going to divide that by x squared. Now, I know you might be getting bored and think that you know all of everything. But trust me, we got a lot more cool stuff coming here, starting with this problem. So anyway. All right, so there we go. Typed it in, which sometimes takes the longest of it all. But now we're going to go vars, y vars, get y1, and let's go. Let's type in that 2.9964. Let's get really, really, really close from the left. And, well, it looks pretty obvious. I'm at 1.4, right? And, and again, sometimes kids like to check. They say, well, you know, let's just get a little bit closer. Let's just get a little bit closer. And the only thing that stinks is you got to, keep going and grabbing the y1 but let's get a little bit closer 2.9999998 really really close oh wow 1.4 so it appears that from the left hand side i'm at 1.4 and again i gotta always check both sides you can't just check one side and think you're done um and you're gonna learn that real quick here so again 
zero 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 one five and that's oh wow hey what do you know 1.3999 pretty close to 1.4 so once you confirm that coming from both sides you're getting closer to the same common number hey that's your limit so my answer here would be 1.40 okay or just 1.4 i guess i didn't need that zero all right but this problem's super cool so i actually want to do the exact same function but this time we want to talk about a different value, negative two. But it is the same function. So this is going to actually save me time from having to go into my calculator. It's already plugged in there. But this time they want me to approach negative two. So from the left, now you got to be careful. This is negative now, right? Sometimes making a number line helps. From the left, we're talking negative 2.0001. So that's just a little bit to the left of negative two. And to the right, would be like negative 1.9999. Again, remember, because this is it's it's opposite when you're negative. So from the left would be negative 2.001, and from the right would be negative 1.999. Hope everybody understands that. Simple math there. All right, so again, I already got this typed in. So all I gotta do is go back and grab my y vars. And I'm gonna show you another shortcut here in one second. All right, and again, now I'm gonna go from the left hand side, negative two point zero 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 one and i get wow negative nineteen thousand nine hundred ninety nine and that's kind of confusing to me i'm like what's going on with that so so one thing you could do here like just to kind of get the y1 faster is another feature of your calculator if you didn't know this if you hit second enter it'll bring up the last thing you typed in so i could say okay you know let's just get a little bit closer negative two point zero 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 two and whoa okay now i'm at negative well that was a big jump so it's it's like way down it's just like a, it's it's almost like negative infinity like it just keeps getting lower and lower and lower so second enter let let's let's add some more zeros in there right and we'll just put an eight just get really really low say whoa my gosh look how low it is now it's billions of minutes so it's really really low so it, it appears that there is no limit, right? Like in the previous, every problem we've looked at so far, I was going somewhere. Like I was getting a solid number that I was getting closer to. In this case, it's like it's like it's literally just going lower and lower and lower. And that's kind of weird. But okay, let's let's I guess that happens. Okay. So let let's let's try the other side, just for just for sake of argument, see what happens over there. So go and grab my y bars, y1, and this time let's do negative one point nine 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 and whoa okay now it's kind of opposite i'm, I'm really high before i was in negative as a really really low negative now i'm up i'm twenty thousand. so again i'm going to do second y equals and maybe i i try to get even closer nine nine five six eight again I, i'm just choosing random numbers to say that it just it doesn't matter just get really really close holy cack 462,000. so okay so what's happening here is that i actually have no limit so I checked both sides and from the left side, I was going like down, like seemingly forever. I was just getting lower. The closer I got to negative two, the lower I went. And from the right hand side, the closer I got, the higher I went. So this actually has no limit because I need a number, like, right? The definition of a limit is that the limit needs to equal L, a number. And this limit just does not exist, DNA. So think about what I just said. As we get closer and closer to X from the left, I keep going down forever. As I get closer and closer to X from the right, I keep going up forever. So think about that for a second. So um, if I was thinking about a graph of this, and here's negative two, as I get closer and closer and closer and closer and closer to negative two, I actually just shoot down forever. And as I get closer and closer and closer to negative two from the right, I was shooting up forever. Huh, I think that might be a vertical asymptote. And that actually makes sense graphically, right? As you approach a vertical asymptote, you don't go anywhere other than straight up or straight down. So that the limit, the limit's got to come together. You got to you got to meet at this common value, and that's just not happening here. All right, let's do one more example here. Um, same exact function, but let's talk about as x approaches negative four this time. Um, so x approaching negative four, so we got to come from both sides, right? So um, from the left hand, it sometimes helps to make a little number line. So from the left hand side, that'd be like negative 4.00015. And then from the right hand side, that would be negative 3.99986. And I wanna see what's gonna happen to my corresponding y values. So good news is I already have this typed into y equals. I'm just gonna go vars, y vars. And let's start with the left hand side. And that would be like negative 
4.00015. And dang, okay, now listen, make sure you be very careful looking on your calculator. I see that e to the negative five. That means I actually move my decimal point five times to the left, which would produce negative, or excuse me, not negative, there's no negative there. It would produce positive point zero 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 seven. Well, that number's really, really close to zero. Right, and then you say, okay, let's get closer. So negative 4.000002, that's really close to negative four on the left-hand side. And look at that number, I, it's, it's, that's not 9.99, please don't tell me that's 10, that's 0 .000009. So that number's really, really close to zero. So on the left-hand side, I'm getting really super close to zero. And you know, what about the right-hand side? So again, vars, Y bar is going to grab that function and let's do negative 3.99986. Again, really, really close to negative four from the right. And same thing's kind of happening. I'm getting negative 0 0.00007, which is again, really, really, really close to zero. So it looks like both sides are getting super close to zero. So be very careful when you see that E to the negative. That means you're going to move the decimal to the left, which creates a number very, very small and close to zero. So it appears my limit for this problem is getting really, really close to zero. So what we just witnessed on this last problem was that we saw the same problem and we saw several different things happen. First, we saw an answer, right? We were, we, we were getting really, really close to this value of 1.4. So we checked the left side, we checked the right side of three, and we saw a common number shooting up on both sides. And that number is really close to 1.4. This problem, we, were, we weren't going anywhere. We were going down forever. We were just seemingly getting bigger and bigger and bigger in a negative direction. Then we check the other side. We're getting bigger and bigger in a positive direction. Limit, limits need to go to a number. If you're not coming to a number, you just don't exist. There is no limit. And then again, on this problem, we, we saw zero. And watch out because zero sometimes doesn't look like zero. So when we saw our calculator here, we saw numbers that were really close to zero, even though they didn't look like it. So make sure you understand that e to the negative five or e to the negative seven Got to move that decimal um, a, a number of times to the left, and which creates a very small number close to zero. All right, so let's just look at um, two more problems here. And these problems are a little interesting. These are piecewise functions. It's been a while since we looked at piecewise function, but piecewise functions are actually make it kind of really, really fun to analyze um, using your um, you know, limits. So, okay, so here we go. So this piecewise function says uh, the function is 3x minus 2 if x is less than 5. Okay, so if x is like 2, I would plug it in there. Or x plus 8 if x is greater than 5. So if fx was like 27, I would plug it in here. But now they want me to say, hey, what happens if I get closer and closer to 5? And the first thing I notice is that I am actually not allowed to be 5. Right? Neither one of these inequalities says less than or greater than or equal to. So I'm actually not allowed to be 5. But you know, this is the beauty of limits because limits don't care about what happens at five. They care about how we get really, really close to five. So let's get close to five from both sides. So left-hand side, we would be talking about like 4.9999. And from the right-hand side, that'd be like 5.0001. So if I want to go from the left-hand side below five, like 4.9999, I need to use this top equation. So I need to plug 4.9999 in to that top equation. Now, once again, I, I could go to y equals, but let's just do this real quick. You know, just using the algebra of it. So three times 4.9999 uh, minus two. So if I get really, really close to five, but below five, right? So that'd be this top equation. I get dang near 13, really, really close to 13. All right, so now I got to plug in 5.001, but that's that's slightly greater than five, so that would actually get plugged into x plus eight. So that's going to be 5.0001 plus eight, and whoa, that number's also really really close to 13. So um, if I choose a number really close to five below it, I get something really close to 13. If I choose a number really, really close to 5 above it, I get also get something really, really close to 13. So the answer to this problem is 13. So I have these two very different functions, 3x minus 2 and x plus 8. But as they get closer and closer to 5, the y value is getting closer and closer to 13. So they do appear to be coming together towards 13. So that's, that's nice when each side comes together. We like that. All right, let's do one more of these piecewise functions. 
All right, this one is split at negative three. So if X is less than negative three, we're gonna do X squared plus two. If X is greater than negative three or equal to negative three, we're going to use two X plus seven. So this function does allow for X equal negative three because the or equal to sign right here, but I don't even care. Remember, because limits don't care about what happens at negative three, that happens, they care about what happens, you get really close to it. So again, um, sometimes it does help put negative three in the number line and say, okay, from the left, it would be like negative 3.0014. And from the right, it would be like negative 2.99986. And what I want to do is I want to plug these in. So I just got to plug them in the right spot. So if I'm slightly below 3 or slightly below negative 3, I need to use this top equation. So that would be negative 3.0014 squared plus 2. And if I'm going to be slightly above 3, right, mathematically with negative numbers, negative 2.9986 is slightly greater than negative 3, then I need to use this equation right here. So I'd be 2 times negative 2.99986 plus 7. So I'm going to go to my calculator here. I'm going to do this math. So let's see here. On that first one, I have negative 3.000. Well, I had two zeros. Sorry about that. 1, 4. Make sure you square that and then add 2. So on that side, I was dang near 11. I mean, really, really close to 11. And let's check the other side. On the other side, it's 2. Because remember, on the other side, i got to use the different equations. This is the deal with piecewise functions. So negative 2.99986 plus 7. Oh, boy. Okay. So this is this is weird. So on one side, I, I, on, the, on the left side of negative 3, I'm up at 11, or really close to 11. And on the right-hand side of negative 3, I, I'm at 1. So there's, those aren't coming together. The, the two sides aren't meeting. One's at 11, one's at 1. Well, that, that can't work. I, for the limit to exist, it has to be coming together at this common number. Right, like you know, when I follow the function, they need to come together. This is not coming together. So the one side's eleven, one side's one. So here I got eleven, here I got one. The limit does not exist, and this actually should sound familiar. This is a jump. Remember, we talked about jumps uh, a number of months ago. But you know, one side was up here at eleven, and another side was down here at one, and there's this 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 jump in between. So here's negative three right here, and um. From the left side, it was at 11, and on the right side, it was at 1, and, and that's just, that's just, that's not working. They need to come together. So that's actually a good way to end this video, is to understand that, that limits sometimes don't exist. Um, limits need to come together. You need to check both sides. What's happening is I get really, really close to that A value from the left. What happens is I get really, really close to that A value from the right, and they need to be coming together, right? You know, 13.99999 or 14.0001, they're coming together at 14. But when one side's 11 and one side's 1, this, the limit doesn't exist. It just doesn't come together. It doesn't make sense. So I know that this is a very, very um, rough first video over limits, and it's definitely going to take some time for us to understand this brand new concept. But limits is just a way, um, essentially, of saying, hey, what's happening not at a particular value? What's happening is we get really, really close to that value. So um, if you think about it, like that's kind of hard to explain, and that's what this limit notation is trying to do. It's trying to say, hey, what's the limit of this function? Where is this function going as x gets closer and closer to a? So, you know, typically we plug in a, we get a y value. Plug in x, you get y. Plug in x, you get y. That, that's not what we're doing here. We're not plugging in x. We're, we're plugging in numbers really, really close to it to determine what's happening to the y values. And hopefully they're coming together, but if they're not, the limit does not exist.